Hello, N4HNH here, and I'm going to shoot this video in answer to William's great question. I've actually been thinking about shooting a video about this subject um, as far back as when I shot the video uh, related to uh, transmit audio settings on the Yaesu FTDX5000 MP. Um, and I just never got around to it. I got on into other, other video subjects. Uh, I think I got off on the 60 meter series and then um, the Storm and the FT3DR. So uh, thank you, William, for jogging my memory on that. Um, so this video is going to cover the receive audio tapering that you can do in the FTDX 5000 MP. So uh, with no further ado, I'll get right into it. I'm going to start on sideband um, <clears throat> since it's probably going to be more popular than any other subject, so I'll, I'll do it first. Uh, so in the Yaesu FTDX 5000 MP, down here on the lower right, of course, to the right of our, of our uh, VFO knob is our menu button, and I press that, and that throws me into the menu. So I'm on menu 99. That is the low-cut frequency for sideband. So you'll notice I have mine set at 150 hertz. You can, of course, go down to 100. You can go down to off. Um, I generally run it at about 150. Um, I have also done 200 and even 250. Once in a while, like if I'm having a QSO with somebody and they're, they've got their microphone EQ set where it's emphasizing so much low end that they sound almost muffly. I don't know if that's a word. <laughs> muffled, um, then I will, you know, maybe raise that a little bit. But I generally run it at 150. Low cut frequency. Now, the next one is very important. This is how many dB per octave you're going to roll off from 150. So let me explain what that is. This is what's called a, uh, a, a filter that does what's called shelving. Shelving. S-H-E-L-V-I-N-G. So what happens is, is you pick your low cut frequency. In other words, you say, well, this is the lowest frequency that I want to allow into my, uh, my receive audio. But then what you do, you know, you never exactly cut it off like a straight down, not going to hear 149 hertz. Okay, that's not going to happen. What happens is you set it here for how many dB per octave you want that shelving to slope. So uh, 6 dB means that it's going to have a gentle slope. And if you if you want to go back and watch the videos I did uh, regarding the Chebyshev and uh, Butterworth filter curves, it's very similar to that. Of course, those curves apply to IF filters. So let me, let me give you a, a practical application here. If I say I want to cut 150 at 6 dB per octave, that means at 75 hertz, the audio will have dropped by uh, 6 dB. That makes sense? An octave is essentially when you double frequency, so, or half. So, so if I look at 150 hertz, an octave above would be 300 hertz, an octave below would be 75 hertz. And so, um, a 6 dB cut per octave means that at 75 hertz, the audio will have been uh, knocked down by 6 dB. Now, the other choice is 18 dB. They, have, they give you two choices. So that means at 75 hertz, because I've selected 150 as my cutoff, at 75 hertz, I will have knocked those lower frequencies down by 18 dB. So this is going to be closer to, you know, you might call a brick wall filter, but... I mean, because 18 dB is a pretty pretty distinct uh, cutoff. So, um, in other words, let me turn the volume up and let you listen to this. This is uh, South Cars. Uh, let me go back. Low in, low in. Okay. So, 6 dB means it's going to be gently sloping down to zero hertz, if you will. 18 dB is going to mean a sharper slope. Now, honestly, it depends on the um, transmit audio of the other station, too, as to how much of that low end uh, you hear cut out or not. 
but let me switch back over here and I'll go to 150 and I'll bring that up. Hear that thin out? And honestly, the average human voice is anywhere from 300 hertz to 3000. So this setting of 150 just puts a little body into the voice. Um, you could absolutely justify doing 300 with an 18 dB cut. And, uh, and honestly, sometimes that might be a little more clarity if, you, if you're struggling to, to, with somebody's audio. But for, let's say, casual rag chew, 150 seems comfortable to me. And also, too, I just let it gently slope off at 6 dB. So it's a matter of personal preference, okay? Now I'm going to go to uh, the next one up. There's low cut. And there's low cut frequency. Let me turn this down again. Low cut frequency, and then how much of a slope I want. And I'm I'm saying low cut at 6 dB per octave. All right. Then you've got high cut frequency, 2800 hertz or 2.8 kilohertz. And then there's also a shelving. Um, um, amount, if you will, there, uh, and you get a, you get a choice of 6 dB or 18 dB. So just remember, 16, 6 dB, it gently slopes it off. 18 dB is a sharp cutoff. So I've got it at 2800. Honestly, I I've changed this around, but let me give you a rule of thumb that I usually use. I, I actually do switch it around once in a while, just for I don't know, <laughs> for boredom. Um, now it kind of depends. Let me let me let me tell you. If, you know, when you've got QRM that's got that high sizzly sound from nearby, you can actually help. I know you've got shift and you got the filter width here and all these things you can do that I've shot other videos about how to deal with uh, QRM. That high, you know, when you've got that high pitch, uh, it can be low too. But let's just talk about the high pitch QRM. That little sizzly sound you get when somebody's uh, maybe three kilohertz away, but a little bit of splatter. Well. Um, if you if you lower this down to 2400 okay, I, I, even 2100 but let's say let's I'll do this sometimes 2400 and then an 18 DB per octave uh, cutoff which means by the way now we're doing it in reverse at 4800 Hertz their signal is knocked down by 18 DB because um, again it's per octave so 2400 times 2 is another octave, 4800 hertz, 18 dB of cut. Now, if I do it that way, I'm, I'm, I'm helping myself as far as combating that high-pitched sizzle that you're getting from QRM. Um, that would be something I would do in an extreme case. But here's how I have run it as far as, you know, I've run it this way for um, just casual operating where I put it on 2400 and I don't do 18 dB, I do 6 dB, which means it gently slopes um, its way up to 4800 hertz. So I'm still getting some of the content of 2900, 3000, 3200, you know, and of course actually it, it goes up to um, 4000 and or off. Okay, so you're still going to get a little bit of this content if you've got it gently sloping at 6 dB, but the higher frequency the frequency goes, the more it cuts. So um, now the other, but the other thing you could do is uh, is do it at 2800 hertz and do a a sharper cutoff. So you're going to hear everything up to 2800 hertz full full out so, for, so uh, no attenuation and then after 2800 hertz it begins to attenuate if you will by 18 db per octave so by the time it reaches 4800 hertz which the radio doesn't even allow anything about 4000 but in, you know just think of it by the time it would be at 4800 hertz um, it would have been knocked down by 18 db in other words frequencies above 2800 hertz so let me give you a little practical rule of thumb there. I usually either operate with 18 dB of cut at 2800 or I'll put it on 2400 hertz and cut it by 6 dB. If I'm battling heavy QRM, so for you contesters, you might even want to consider 18 dB cut at 2400 or even better, maybe even come down 
to about 1.9 or 9, 1900 hertz, okay, 1.9 kilohertz with an 18 dB per octave cut. Because a lot of times you contesters are operating two kilohertz away uh, from one another. And yeah, sometimes you guys even go down to um, 1.5 and I've had you move in on my QSOs before. <clears throat> yeah, uh, when I was having a QSO and I had a guy that was uh, 0.75 away, okay. Uh, I used everything this radio is capable of to continue my QSO. But those, for, for contesters, uh, you know, consider coming down underneath, uh, you know, maybe 1900 and cut it at 18 dB per octave. Of course, the audio is going to suffer. It's going to sound tinny, pinchy. Um, but then again, you know, it'll help you combat the QR Mary. So just think about it. We're, kind of, we're combating QR Mary first, and I've shot other videos about this. You want to work your way in from the receiver. From the, from the antenna, so to speak. So the first plan of attack, you've got things like attenuators, you've got the, the VRF in this radio, or if you bought the external mu tuners. Uh, if you happen to have an FTDX 101, for example, it would be called VC tune. So you're working your way in, you're trying to minimize the width of your receiver starting at the front end. Then you've got your IF roofing filters, and then you can get into you know narrowing the roofing filter here. I can't show you right now because I'm in the menu. Well, I'll jump out a second. So you can get into here and narrow your roofing filter. You know, again, in a contest, maybe come down to 1.5, 1.8. Um, and but the, so the last step of this chain of trying to minimize QRM using uh, you know all the all the abilities this radio has would be the last line of defense would be actually tapering the audio itself. So now if you're in a casual rag chew and you want the you want the person that you're listening to to sound like they're in the room with you and it's their natural voice, of course, um, you know, wider frequency response is better, generally. Uh, again, sometimes if they've got terrible sounding audio, I may tweak it here. <laughs> but uh, but in, for a general rule, I'm just saying 2800 hertz rolled off at 18 or 20, 2400 hertz roll off at six unless you're fighting some qrm then maybe just reach over there and tweak it up and do 2400 hertz at 18 and if you're in a contest if you're contesting maybe you want to even do 1900 hertz at 18. all right now i'm going to quickly cover the other ones because now that you've got this background it works the same for all the other bands and i'll show you what i've got mine set to for the other bands but let me get back to my normal 2.8 at 18 dB, there we go. So I'm gonna roll roll back backwards here in the menu to number 47, there we go. So this is the low cut frequency for AM. AM, amplitude modulation, I've got it at 100 hertz. 6 dB cut, so a gentle slope down from 100 hertz. Yeah, that's gonna give kind of a rich, deep AM sound, uh, which is what the AMers like, okay? And then my high cut's at 3800. Remember, AM's a lot wider uh, frequency range than sideband so those guys will generally be from six to nine kilohertz I've got it uh, rolling off at 3800 but gently 6 DB so by the time it's um, 7200 Hertz I'm sorry 7600 Hertz um, double 3800 it's sloped off by 6 DB that generally gives me a really good sounding receive audio for AM all right, then, um, then you've got the same thing. Um, let me go up to menu 53. Got too fast there. There we go. So this is for CW. I've got it set at 400 hertz. Okay, let me explain. I like 550 hertz as my listening frequency. Sometimes I'll do 600. Uh, you know, if, if, if sometimes 600 helps if I'm trying to pull somebody like a rare DX up out of the noise floor. Um, but uh, so anyway, I've got it right now at 400 with a 6 dB slope, a gentle slope. And then my high cut is 700. Let me show you why. That's as low as I can go. <laughs> if I could go to 6, I would because like I said, I've got my side tone set at 550 hertz. And I've got that knocked down by 18 dB per octave. And um, to be honest with you, I think at 400, I, okay, no, I did intentionally do that. Uh, I, I tried 18 dB, but it, it kind of took some of the fullness out of their tone. Uh, you can try that, though. You know, maybe try um, 400 hertz 
at 18 dB and see if you're okay with the tone quality. It took a little bit of fullness out, and I think that's why I had it on 6 dB the last time I fooled with it. Um, now, you could... Since I've got my tone set at 550, you could go ahead and jump up to 500. But I will tell you what it does is it begins to knock the volume of the tone down a little bit. And that's why I wound up at 400. Now, again, let me give you what I'm, an idea of what, the, what I'm doing here is I'm letting the audio section of the receiver, which is last in the chain, right? I'm even letting the audio help me. Um, focus in on only the frequency range that I want to be listening to. So that's for CW. I've got so a 400 hertz, 6 dB of cut uh, slope there, if you will, per octave, and then 700 hertz at 18. So I'm, I'm anything above 700 hertz, I want to cut completely out if I can, you know, as much as I can. So then I'll go. Now we'll go up to menu 75. And this is the low cut frequency for FM. 200 hertz is what I'm using with an 18 dB cut. So in other words, below 200, I'm, I'm sharply cutting, cutting off. And then I've got uh, my high cut at 3800 hertz with a slope that's 6 dB per octave. So I'm gently sloping off the high end. You know, I, want, I, I don't want their voice to sound too dark. So that's FM, 75 at 200. 76 at 18 dB per octave, then 77 at 3800 hertz, and then at 6 dB per octave. So there you go. Um, those are the, now there, there are also settings I should point out. There's settings in here for packet, ready, similar thing, okay? Similar concept. Um, but uh, like I said, I'm, I normally am uh, I'm a sidebander usually, uh, some FM, a little bit of AM. And so now I, if you've watched some of my previous videos, you know that I generally leave my menu on 104, which is my band pet transmit bandpass filter set at 100 to 2900. Go back and watch the video about transmit audio to learn more about that. And the reason I do that is when I get out of here. Um, so let's say I've been rag chewing and I want to work a DX station and I need to cut through a little better. I'll tap the menu button. And I always leave it on 104 because it pops right up. And then I just roll this up to maybe 300 to 2700, which gives you that, you know, that sound that you get out of a, um, of a DX cartridge uh, microphone. It kind of pinches up your audio a little bit and helps it stand out to work a DX pileup. Okay, that's a bonus for you because we were talking about receive audio. But I just wanted you to know why I tend to leave mine on 104 before I exit the menu. It will always return. Watch this. Let's say the last thing I adjusted was the high cut, 102. When I get back in, it'll go back to 102. So I generally leave it on 104 uh, so that that one's at my fingertips if in case I'm going to work a DX station. Okay, uh, I hope that uh, this answered your question, William, and uh, anyone else out there who was curious about the receive audio settings. Uh, let me recap. So rem what we're doing is... Setting our receive audio is we're putting, think of it as the icing on the cake. We've, we've worked on the front end of the receiver. We've, we've narrowed down the frequency range we want to hear using, uh, now attenuators are just knocking down noise, okay? But we're using attenuators. Uh, we're using IPO to knock down the noise floor. But also, you're also knocking down receive sensitivity, which is also helping combat QRM, remember? You want that receiver sensitivity as low as it can go that, and you still be able to hear who you're trying to hear. And then you got your, uh, your um, uh, in, in some cases, not all radios have these, but the pre-selectors like VRF, MuTuner, VC Tune, and then you've got your roofing filters. So this, this is the icing on the cake tailoring the audio to again assist with narrowing the bandwidth in case we're getting interference from a lower frequency or a higher frequency so just let me leave you with this um, you could if the interference is the lower pitch noise that you're hearing from QRM then go to low cut 99 maybe raise that up to knock down some of that low end again it's gonna it's gonna uh, affect the fidelity but you will maybe be able to complete your cue so all right i hope uh thanks for watching i hope this helped you and again thank you for my patreons www.patreon.com slash n4hnh 
Uh, any contribution you can make to help me keep the channel alive is much appreciated. 73.